will be no defense to contend with tonight for these outstanding three-point shooters. Just the league's best marksman getting ready to go head to head. Nice action, everyone. Kevin Harlan, happy to be here with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. Tonight is the celebrated Foot Locker three-point contest. The best and the baddest and the most accurate from behind the arc, showing everyone what they've got. There's a lot of tremendous three-point talent in the NBA, and no better place to see that skill showcase than right here, right now. And, and I might be a bit biased, but, but the three-point contest is something I definitely look forward to all year long. Composed of all money balls, those are worth two points instead of just one. All in all, a max possible score of 34. And 60 seconds to take all 25 shots. Not a ton of time. As soon as one shot is out of your hands, you have to be ready to get off the next. The hot start is pretty essential, isn't it? I mean, it seems like we rarely see guys recover from a bad first rock or two. Yeah, I, I think you hit it right on the head because oftentimes you're putting more and more pressure on yourself to perform, and it is hard to shoot with confidence when you do that. Money ball, no good. Struggling. Big time. That's five in a row. He better get it together. No good on his sixth consecutive shot. Down to the money ring. At seven. He pulls a total of just seven points. Boy, I bet he wants a do-over on that performance. He was well into the second rack by the time he got his first shot to fall. And, and you begin 0 for 7, not the kind of start you're going to write home to bomb about. So it's Clay Thompson ready to start here. And, and Clay's dad was an NBA player, but, but played more down in the post. But, but as you know, the more you are around the NBA, the more coaching you get. And it's no surprise to see Clay shoot this well. You can't let misses get to you here. There's no time to feel sorry for yourself. Shoot, 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 and shoot some more. Exactly. That clock is ticking. You've got to forget about it. You can't change it. Just concentrate on the map. No good with his fourth in a row. Can't get the money ball. Nine points. Eleven points. Finishes with eleven. Well, I, I didn't expect that score to be as low as it was. What about you guys? You, know, you, you just kept waiting for that point where he would get hot and rattle off a few in a row, and it just never materialized. So it'll be Kyle Lowry here. And, and Kyle Lowry showing more and more confidence in his three-point shot. Didn't have NBA three-point range coming out of Villanova, but he certainly has it now. You know, in the three-point contest, these guys are really on an island out there. I mean, you're used to sharing the court with nine other guys. Four of them are your teammates, and now it's just you out there. It has a little bit of a golf, tennis, or track and field feel. Yeah, and some guys love that. The others don't. So if you don't, you probably shouldn't be here. But I think for the most part, everyone in the lineup here tonight loves it. Ten points on the board. Tied for first. And that is the best score of the qualifying round. And Lowry looking very comfortable. Boy, he's really going for it in these last laps here. Wow. The round ends, and he's got 19. Boy, he looked great out there, didn't he? Money balls, so critical to knock down in this competition, and he gets six out of nine. And here we go with Otto Porter. Yeah, that score can't have him too worried. I'm guessing he'll top that without much of a problem. Seven more points to stay in contention. Eight. Not a single point to show from that rack. He's really cooling off here. Six more points to stick around. He comes away with four points on that rack. Two more to stay in it. Two more points to stick around. Only managed to sink one there. Now is six. One more to stay alive. Gets the money ball. He misses his fourth straight. He gets to the 10-point mark for the round. 
Well, not his finest showing. I think we can all agree he could have done a lot better. Well, an 0 for 6 start isn't going to get you into a, a good frame of mind, and that's exactly the way his round began. And here we go with Kyle Korver. Kyle Korver, a terrific three-point shooter. Led the league in three-pointers made in 2005 with 226 of them. You know, he was born in California, raised in Iowa. His mom was a great basketball player. Excellent fact to again from you, Kevin. <laughs> To avoid being dismissed and kicked out, he's got to have at least 10. The door left open here. He's in good shape. Five more points to stay in it. Now is six. Four more points to stay alive. That's seven. Two more to stay in it. Nine points. Honey ball, no good. And with that, he reaches the second place score. Finishes with 11. Well, not his finest showing. I think we can all agree he could have done a lot better. I guess one way to look at it is that he was just in his discomfort zone in that round. <laughs> no need to put it into words there. I mean, we could all see how unsettled he was. That could not go as planned. So it's J.J. Reddick ready to go. And, and J.J. Reddick, a terrific shooter. Well over 40% from distance in his career at Duke. And in the NBA, the accuracy has continued. A player who has to be accounted for at all times. With 11 points, he can advance on. He's got to be feeling very confident about his chances here. That's seven consecutive misses now. He needs an adjustment. No good with his ninth in a row. He's all over the place. No messing around now. He's going to have to be at his best the rest of the way. He's really cooling off here. Now three points. He needs eight points more to move on. He just can't find the bottom of the net with those money balls. He's missed all four. He needs eight points more to stay in contention. Well, guys, that's it. He's out of it. He can't make up the difference quite at this time. Nope, too far behind, but he'll finish up anyway. Yeah, and I think he definitely gave it his best. Just not enough in the take there. Seven points was the best he could do. Something went terribly wrong out there, guys, with him in that round. At his worst point, he failed to convert 12 straight shots. I mean, the more misses you run up, the harder it becomes to snap out of it. Lowry's got to be pretty happy about his performance in the first round, as it has him looking very, very good for the finals. Quite honestly, I think the final round is wide open. I mean, we've got a bunch of great shooters moving on. You guys, I, I can't pick a favorite. I think everybody is in the mix here. So it's Clay Thompson ready to start here. And as a rookie last year, Clay Thompson showed early on that he had no problem, Clark, letting it fly from deep. Kevin, he shot over 41% from deep, which is really impressive for a first-year player. He's got a bright future, and I think he's got a high ceiling. Sky's the limit. He's got 10. Down to the money round. 12 for him. Now 14. 14 points is his total as the round comes to a close. I'd say he handled that round pretty well, guys. Yeah, and he managed to hit four money balls. Not terrible, but, but could have been better. And here we go with Kyle Korver. And Kyle Korver also led the league in three-point percentage back in 2010, shooting almost 54% from beyond the arc. That's hard to fathom. Wow. The best single season in NBA history, and he's been in the shootout twice, still looking for that first win. You'll need to match 14 points to top. Now with four. Can't get the money ball. Misses for the fourth straight time. He's got five. He got three points off that rack. Not bad. Seven more points and he'll tie it. Now eight points. Six points more and it's tied. Ten points on the board. That gives him 12. Nothing to it as Corver has got it. Oh. He finishes with 14 points on the board. 
might say a solid showing from him. Yeah, even if he didn't set things completely on fire, it's still a fine score. Yeah, and I took from that that it wasn't his best, but, but he's still such a good shooter that less than his best still produces a solid score. So it'll be Kyle Lowry here, and Kyle Lowry is still building up his career percentage on threes. Yeah, but since the 2010-11 season, it's been a shot that he's gained more and more confidence with. You know, he got the crowd behind him a little bit when he got it going in the first round. That's still got to be giving him some positive thoughts, I'm sure. And, and you know what? He may not even be thinking about the last round anymore. This, this round is a perfectly clean slate for him and everybody else. Six points more to tie it up. Now nine points. He's got ten. Nice finish. Well done. Three more points to win. Now 14. He finishes with 14 points on the board. He turned in a pretty good round right there, don't you think? And he made three out of nine money balls, missing out on a lot of extra points. So it's Clay Thompson ready to start here. He's got 30 seconds here to put up as many points as he can. Makes his first there. That rack did not go very well. His fifth consecutive miss. That's two. Now three points. A slow start. This is trouble. His fifth consecutive miss. He stumbles through the round with just five points. And here we go with Kyle Corver. Pressure's on. He's got 30 seconds to top the score and come away the champ. One point. That's two. Can't get the money ball. Now three points. Four points. Gets the money ball. So he puts just six points on the board. So it'll be Kyle Lowry here. 30 seconds back on the clock. Can he do better? Let's go. Misses for the fourth straight time. Just two points there. He won't be happy with that. He misses his fourth straight. Four points. He's got five. Now with six. He posts a total of just seven points. And we've reached the finish line of a Foot Locker three-point contest. All our competitors gave it their best shot, but one man was head and shoulders above the rest. This year's champion, Kyle Lowry. He was one chill customer out there. He really kept his wits about him the entire way. I got 24 hours, 24 hours.